Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to draw pretty much anything from your imagination. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of how I do that. And, um, you know, hopefully you can pick something up from it and apply it to your own paintings. So I'm going to start with the 19 by uh, 1920 by 1080 piece. So it's just regular monitor 1080p size. And uh, let's let's begin with line art. I already have an idea in my head. And I'm going to try to explain what the idea is and kind of show you how I'm, I go about transferring that onto the paper. So it's similar to a different painting I did a while ago where there was a, a monster picking up a little girl who was picking flowers. So this time the idea is it's going to be a flower field. So here I'm going to put down a couple of quick lines to kind of indicate where I want the um, foreground the closest objects to us to be and uh, and this is going to be the little grass hill and you're gonna see a lot of um, short flower type things I'm gonna kind of um, indicate those by having these little blotches everywhere so what I'm planning on doing is having a little creature that has a flower type thing on its back and it's uh, trying to hide from this giant bee thing. So the bee is kind of the bad guy in this uh, image. Or it could be a wasp, you know, because bees are bros. Um, so, again, I'm using really crude line art. And this is kind of my inspirational phase, you know, where a lot of things, everything is subject to change. And uh, sometimes I completely throw an idea out of the window and replace it with something else. So... You know, in some cases, if I had this exact idea, by the end of it, it could have, it could end up being an underwater thing with, you know, just whatever else going on, like all sorts of creatures. But uh, I'm gonna try to stick with this, and we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, okay, so I imagine, kind of like the ground, uh, being on the bottom left side, and then the bee is hovering, hovering like a little helicopter. Um, surveillance you know drone or something and it's it's overlooking overlooking the field of, uh, of flowers so a lot of things you're gonna see me just use shapes shapes for everything and you've probably seen this from uh, school books you know how to draw this how to draw that everything is almost always split up into shapes now sometimes I kind of uh, if I draw this whatever I'm drawing often um, I'll go straight from from shapes and start uh, drawing the lines already kind of contoured to the desired you know thing but in this case I'm gonna use so I'm using three circles a circle for the head and the eyes the eyes are gonna be protruding out on either side of the bee I want them to be really bug-eyed no pun intended or intended I guess you know whatever puns are cool um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll color it in a little bit to kind of indicate where the pupil is to show where it's, it's looking. Uh, I want to give it like a menacing face, so I might have to play around with that a little bit, but I might do like this kind of slit up, down, across, down again, and that's going to be sort of where the mouth is. Probably want to cut, cut the circle down a little bit on the bottom so that its chin isn't too big. Um, we're going to want to have the antennas visible. It's going to really give it that bug look. Now we're going to draw another circle. So the circle ra or that wraps around here, you see I didn't go all the way around, but you technically could if you wanted to, um, since, since this object is, you know, the goal is to have a three-dimensional looking thing. The circle wraps around behind, and this is the torso or the... I forgot the bug name for it. I think we can cut it down a little bit as well. So it's going to be really hard to follow, possibly for, you know, maybe not for all of you, but for some for sure. And the reason is uh, it's kind of a really personal thing, the artist and the, the early sketch. You do a lot of, uh, a lot of cutting and, and pasting and, you know, not everybody um, might see what you're doing. Uh, as something that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know if that even makes sense, but basically, you know, a shape that I just put down, you'd be like, well, why is that go there? And in my head, 
uh, without even being able to explain, you know, I already have plans for it. So we're gonna, I want to make this thing look not too scary, just because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to having, you know, my paintings look somewhat uh, charming, I guess, if you want to call it that, and I don't want to kind of go all out and and push, you know, basically themes that I'm not, I'm not really, um, I don't like the mouth. I'm going to redo the mouth. So you see the mouth, easy change. Um, yeah, so I want to have this thing be, you know, I guess cute, if you want to call it that, but at the same time, uh, I want it to be visible as the bad guy. I don't like how the feet look right uh, just yet. And I'm trying to think. So this video might be really long. I'm going to just completely skip on the coloring thing and maybe do that in a separate video. But the line art for me is the most important thing because it's kind of like it's the idea, you know. You have to get the idea across with, with the lines, with the characters. All the design and stuff goes into it here. And the coloring and, you know, the lighting, shading... All of that is mood, and all of that is just to make it look nice, pretty much. Um, you know, I guess, you know, there are painters who use that sole part of the painting to really push their idea, but for me personally, a lot of it just comes down to, you know, kind of uh, storytelling, you know, through, through the lines. Um, and in a way, you know, it's not really through the lines because I'll, in the end, um, after I do color my paintings and stuff, there's virtually no line art left. But uh, I always use them as a guide to where I should paint or what type of shape the whatever I'm painting uh, should have. So I want to avoid having lines uh, line up. So like if I'm doing the torso here and I line it up with the eye, it would look weird. So I'm going to cut it down a little bit, and I think I'm going to move the thorax, maybe it's called, the butt, move the butt up and over, get rid of it on the bottom. So I want, I want the bug to look like it's uh, hovering more and not basically make it look like it's further, um, it's going, you know, along the perspective line or, or whatever. I want the feet to kind of drag, so we're going to indicate all of the little feet lines. And then uh, bees have two longer feet, so there will be two longer feet hovering. And I think we can do, because this won't be a real bee, we can have an exaggerated stinger possibly. Uh, maybe I can curve it around there. So I'm not using any references for this. If there's nothing wrong with using references, and I would say that whenever you are painting something you're just not really familiar with, use a reference. It's it's awesome, you know. You you don't have to copy the image. You don't even have to have the same perspective. But being able to see, for example, in the reference character, you see that he has a, uh, you know his armor has an emblem on the shoulder. So right away, adding that emblem, which you probably otherwise would have missed if you, uh, if you didn't pull a reference up, you're now, you know, making the character a lot more recognizable without, without, you know, yeah, just by looking at a photo. I'm, I'm sorry, my, I'm like trying to focus on this thing while also explaining stuff. So, okay, we've, we curved the, the stinger around and then we'll have you know lines going down the butt we'll just call it you gotta make sure they wrap around properly all of this is obviously not colored yet but you, you uh, hopefully you kind of see what um, what I'm getting at here we'll do the little pillow sacks on the feet for at least the back two legs and all the feet are gonna attach to the midsection and not the butt you don't want feet coming out of your butt. Definitely got to see a doctor if that's the case. 
Okay, cool. We've got the little arms in the front. I'm going to just use an eraser to kind of show where they're at. Uh, I, I will probably end up cleaning up this line art a little bit with uh, another layer so that you guys can see a little bit easier and so that I don't have to make as much adjustments when I go back in to paint. I think we can cut the the butt. This uh, video is going to have a lot of butts. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit to a degree which I like. I still have to figure out what I want to do for the mouth. It might be one of those um, insect type things that you know kind of open up out, outwards where they have the pinchers. I'm going to give this guy a little, eye, um, not eyebrows, eyelids. Okay, I really need to clean up this line art. This eye on the left side especially is just... Slight indication of where the highlights might be. And that's where the eyelid will go. So we have the eye, we have the eyelid ring around them. Do the same thing on the other side. Draw the, the eyelid a little bit. I'm gonna lower the mouth starting position or the top of the mouth down. <laughs> it looks like a hamster or something. Uh, well, that's unintentional, but we can fix that. I can uh, make this line itself. And be all zigzag. See, so now it's got the little pinchers, and you can also I guess this isn't really an indication of how to draw anything, but you see me just from my head coming up with a design for the wasp, and a lot of it is trial and error for me personally, and to take that concept of trial and error out, that whole variable, you have to draw the subject using references. So to give you an example or to kind of understand uh, what I'm trying to say is if I drew bees, if I drew hundreds and hundreds of bees from references, I would be able to throw down this character concept a lot faster and a lot more accurately without needing to do, you know, a lot of guessing and kind of reshaping. Um, so this eye protrudes outwards way more than the other one. Or not enough, I guess. So I'm, I want to make it uh, stick out a lot further. Let's get the pupil colored in there. And I have to make sure that it follows a similar shape. So I'm going to make it the bottom a little bit more curved. Okay, and the pupil needs to... Or is it the iris? No, it's the pupil. Um, actually, bees have fully black eyes, so I might do that, and uh, you know, and we'll see how that looks. That might make it look more evil too, since uh, since white kind of uh, takes the scare off of it. And after I color it, I don't think it'll look as menacing you know because you're using brighter colors and all that and you could you, to make it more menacing you could do things like you know honey dripping from its claws or something even though it doesn't really make sense it's kind of like stuff is dripping that's automatically scary so looking from further away I can see that the the eyelid is in need of reshaping and that means the claw is in need of reshaping as well. The eyelids are really, really making it more difficult to get this mouth in a good place. So again, another feature that I like using is the selection tool. Grab it, use the the um, transform cursor, and you know, spin it around a little bit. 
get it to you know where you want it let's grab the entire head and slide it on over a little bit I think we can make it somewhat smaller alright let's say this is going to be our um, bad guy right we're gonna get the wings to look all fluttery and um, like they're moving like he's hovering it'll be like a lot of soft lines that are blended into the background uh, to kind of indicate that this thing is is moving and I might even make the flowers push out a little bit and have some some sort of indication that you know there's wind being forced upon them I, f I wonder if I'm missing any big big things I know to make this thing look more wasp like I have to not make it fuzzy so that might be a thing I, I don't like the mouth I'm not feeling it we're not gonna go back to the cat mouth but I, I feel like it needs a little bit of tweaking what if we do sort of like this object where it's open now you know what I'm gonna close the mouth and we are going to <laughs> that looks too happy so a lot of times I'll just spend you know a ridiculous amount of time kind of tweaking these and <sighs> And you'll see me zooming in and out often because that's how I get, you know, the most accurate strokes. Mm, no, not not necessarily what I was looking for. I have to figure out what I want to do because right now I feel like the reason that the mouth looks off is because the chin is huge. But the chin is huge because that's just the shape of the head that I have going on. I'll redraw that, whatever I just erased. Um, okay, I'll come back to the mouth and I'll figure it out just for the sake of time, you know, might as well move on. So here, I want to draw our little character that's got the, it's got the flower on his back. So I want to kind of indicate where his feet might be. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna be a four-legged thing So that's his third foot, and this is like the head, I guess. Again, I don't really have an exact idea or as similar of an idea as I did, you know, of what I'm drawing uh, with the wasp. You know, I knew, hey, it's going to be like an insect. This, I'm not sure if I want it to look, uh, you know, dog-like, cat-like, or what, or just completely go off the rails. I might do like a smaller, softer looking creature that just blends into the flower. I think that would look cool. So let's erase the back legs, or just the legs in general, and uh, redo, start with the body. And I want him leaning over, you know, he's trying to hide. He's uh, showing the flower towards the wasp. And we're going to have him look all terrified and stuff soon enough. Or at least that's what, you know, that's the goal. That's what we're going to try to do. And then we'll just have, like, him on one knee. And this leg like that. And he is going to be on his arms. So he's on his hands and knees. Kind of like trying to hide from his pursuers. I can add a lot of movement into this piece because the concept is just, you know, all per not really action based but very kind of like motion heavy. I want to exaggerate the. 
kind of like the angle of the painting so that it's not just a boring horizontal thing going on. And we've got some, you know, a slant. So imagine I took the painting and then I just slanted it and filled in whatever lines. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, and the brush that I'm using, again, painting, you know, there's all these different settings, the round brush, and you can see here are the settings, you know, you can pause it, it's all the same. You can even hit the reset button if you accidentally mess them up. So that's what I'm using to draw the lines. You know, you could use the pencil stuff, but personally, I like the non-texture, you know, very easy to manipulate. That's why I use it. I want to actually kind of show that this thing is looking down. So I might do a thing where the eyes are still black, but the pupils have like a, a slight rim, like that. And I can color that in, you know, like an orangish color to kind of indicate that, um, you know, it's the same color scheme as the wasp and all that. So for the mouth, I think I almost had it. If we slightly open, oh, see, I see it's like offset. Again, transform tool. You'll probably see me cutting and pasting a lot. No, don't like it. Don't like it. All right, let's let's see. Here we've got our little furry guy, and he is, uh, you know, scared for his life. Probably give him, you know, big ears to kind of make the character a little bit more interesting. No, I think it's kind of ugly. We're going to give him smaller ears on top of his head. And we're going to chop uh, some of his chubby face down a bit. It's going to be fuzzy after all. Chubby hands. So uh, I don't really know if um, I don't really know how to explain this process without um, you know just because you can see it and what I'm doing is nothing special. It's just a lot of little lines, and I'm trying to figure out you know the shapes of the hands by just drawing you know what I would think the forearms the shape of the forearms might be the just the shape in general and uh, that's how I get my designs to look you know the way that they do uh, my mom texted me I'll probably end up uh, going back, cleaning up these lines, and getting this thing look a little bit more to what I wanted originally. I want to um, I want to um, real quick just duplicate the sign instead of redrawing it. So I'm going to erase everything. I've shown you guys this technique in the other video. Erase everything but this layer. Um, missed something down here. 
And see now it's just the eye is selected. Move it over. Um, I again I will change it up so that it doesn't look exactly identical. And one sec, I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, let's let's continue. I kind of want to incorporate um, kind of the idea why does this thing have a flower on its back you know and push the the character concept in a way that would make sense um, probably don't have time to do that since I'm drawing this live and kind of didn't plan in advance so um, just kind of come up with your own idea for why this thing would look the way it does Looks a little bit like Bulbasaur. I guess that's kind of what we are going for. I think we do a. I don't want white. We do a different type of nose. More like a bear. That looks more like a pig. <laughs> no, we don't want pig. Again, when I color it, I can use the highlights and stuff to change around. Um, well, it's not like a bear because a bear would have one nose and not like two dots. So we can do that. And I don't just want big bug eyes on everything, so let's change his eyes a little bit. I'm gonna cut down a little bit on the bottom. A little bit on the top. And I, again, it's, it's it just looks like a dog now. Hmm, I don't really want it to look like a dog. I'm going to try to figure out a way to change up the design so that so that we don't just have a dog with a flower on its back. I think it's mainly because of the eyes it looks like that. And do beady, beady eyes, and a, um, and I think I'm gonna spread them out actually. It's like looking more and more and more like a dog, even after the beady eyes, or especially after the beady eyes. I'm gonna do this weird looking creature get rid of the ears the ears are super dog like or cat like we're gonna add little ears on the sides yeah I like this this guy's gonna look like a little tribal dude after I um, fix the the rest of his face so that it's not too you know that makes sense we're gonna have a gi giant killer wasp and this is a little tribal guy and they use they use flower masks you know flower costumes to avoid being uh, absolutely wrecked how does that sound dumb okay that's okay um I guess I can technically paint at an angle because the whole painting's at an angle. So if I spin it like that, let's even rotate this guy's face a little bit. So I want his body drawn in. Um, with humans and stuff, you, if you want to draw humans from your your mind and uh, 
basically in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and positions and all that, you have to learn anatomy. I have an anatomy course from um, from uh, Jazza and stuff that I won from an art contest, but I haven't even really gotten to go over it and, and uh, learn it myself. But I have drawn, you know, a fair bit of things <laughs> in my lifetime, so I kind of know the concept, the idea behind it. Um, I like this guy's face, but I don't like the position that it's in, so I'm gonna need to do a little bit of tweaking. We're not gonna center his head or his eyes, his face, whatever words, you know, we're going to slant it so he's looking away from the wasp. Got to try and make him look more nervous. Okay, hold on. Um, I'm going to, for um, composition sake, I'm going to move this over a bit more. Similar to the submarine that I did, I had, I had that like rule of thirds where it, thing was you know in a big circle and you just uh, and I, I took that little circle thing and lined up the submarine in one corner and kind of had the monster wrapping around following the composition so again I'm just gonna continue to bust out the rest of the sketch get the hair and the head back here we can make him look more tribal, you know, with his, the clothes that he has on, and then just kind of have like a little backpack that's a giant flower attached to it. So this is, you know, most likely a different universe and a different time period. Maybe it is a bee, but it's a bad bee because it's, you know, different time period. You never know. It's kind of, you know, up in the air. You can't really, that's like one thing that, you know, artists can use. It's kind of like, well, you know, it's not real life and, you know, it's my world. So here, bees are bad and blah, blah, blah. That's why the saying is true, you know, there's, there's no, there's no right or wrong when it comes to art. Which kind of sucks because it's, it's sort of like uh, in school where no kid gets left behind, but that basically stops failures from being a thing. And there needs to be, people need to fail to kind of, I don't know, whatever. We don't want to get into some crazy deep discussions, or do we? Maybe on live stream. I gotta, I gotta stream on YouTube sometime. So, again, I'm just drawing his hands I'm gonna have his hands on the grass right behind him so he's like sitting on all fours on his butt and um, he has his feet in front of him and his hands kind of behind him anticipating you know getting wrecked Look at that plump face. How would you not want to? Uh, I don't. I don't even know what the bees do do to them. I don't think they eat them, but maybe these bees do. They're not interested in pollinating flowers. If you know what I mean. I'm just kidding. This is not a rated R uh, channel. All right. I'm going to slightly adjust his. Face. It's a little bit too far over the. His feet are really, really fat right now as well. I, I'm aware of this. I will cut this down to size, and uh, most of the time I do this when I'm actually painting. Like I, I, 
I understand that the sketch is not perfect and for me to save time I just go in and redraw it when I'm painting and uh, just change up the the sketch uh, through you know color and all that kind of redraw the form as I go and that's just you know my technique it might not work for everyone you know if you're somebody who's pretty forgetful you might not want to do that because then you'll forget what you wanted to change and then you'll draw and you'll be like oh that's way off so his shirt will kind of fold downwards and then we've got the backpack maybe I'll wrap the backpack around like that and X style I don't know maybe we'll just do just the X And I'm going to give him a spear, a small spear. Like, why would you go out, you know, with a, a giant, if your world consists of, like, giant killer wasps? All right. I think this is good. Um, the flowers are not really drawn in yet, but you know, that's not that hard to do. Okay, I guess that's interesting enough to kind of continue with. All right, let's separate these and I'm going to do a part two where I can uh, focus on cleaning up some lines, changing some stuff up, and uh, probably fixing and adding a mouth onto the beat. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to try to record part two now so that I can get it out within a day or two instead of like a week or two. And, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for the piece, you know, maybe I'll wait a day to post the new one and uh, I can change stuff and add stuff, you know, things that you would want to see, things that might help you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and stuff if they're interested in painting and I'm going to do my best to help. So yeah, alright, have a good one.